Did someone in your family just kick it and you just got a notification that you inherited their IRA, which is awesome, but there are some issues. It used to be much easier before 2019, before the SECURE Act, it was great. You could just take it out over your lifespan. The rules have changed. So if you inherit an IRA and you're not a spouse or a, a, what do they call it, it, chronically ill, you have to take it out over a 10 year period. Now they say you have to take it out by 10 years, but the IRS has come out in February saying, listen, yeah, that's fine. You have 10 years to take it out, but you have to take it out in equal installments over the 10 years. So the rule doesn't specifically say you have to take it out every year, but they've already said that they're gonna wanna do that. So you don't know if they're gonna retroactively. So if you get an IRA you're, and you're not a spouse or chronically ill, then you should just take out a little bit every year. Also, some people are saying, that might be better anyway, instead of taking a lump sum out in near nine and get like a $400,000 check and pay a lot of taxes, maybe you take out a little every year and then you only pay taxes based on that income. Because remember, when you get it, that's income and that's taxable. So if you're a spouse, chronically ill, a minor child to the dead person, or someone who's 10 years or less younger than the dead person, the rules are different. So if you're a spouse, the rules are different, obviously, right? And this is only for spouses. You can move it into your own IRA and then you just treat it as your IRA. You have your own RMD based on your age. But if you do that, if the person has already hit their RMD, which is over 72, you must take out, withdraw what they should have taken out in that year when you would do the rollover and then you can just treat it as your own. So basically you can roll it into your own IRA and then you can treat it as your own. Like you're 72, you have to take out your life expectancy, RMDs, stuff like that. But if they were at 72 where they had to take money out already, you have to take out what they should have taken out that first year and then it's yours. So if you do an inherited IRA, that's a little different. You roll it into an inherited, then it matters. Are they under the RMD? If they are, then you have until December 31st of the year following when they die to start taking RMDs but then it's based on your life expectancy, not theirs. Well, they're dead, so this, they don't have a life expectancy. Now, if they are RMD age, where they should have taken it out, again, just like before, if they should have taken it out and they hadn't yet when they died, you have to take out the portion they would have taken out and then start doing your own RMDs based on your age. Remember, your age. The first year is going to be based on what they should have taken out and then after that, it's based on your life expectancy. That's only if they've already hit age 72. And here's the last one. If you're a minor child of the person who died, you can take it out over your life expectancy until you're 18, and then the 10-year rule starts, which means you have to take it out over the next 10 years. So you only get the life expectancy RMDs while you're a minor. And then once you hit 18, you must take it out over a 10-year period. They don't want to wait. They don't want to wait till you're 80. So let's do a real quick recap. If, you, if a person dies with an IRA and you're not a spouse, a minor child, or within 10 years or chronically ill, you have to take it out over the 10 years, hopefully a little each year, but no, no worse than within 10 years. If you're a spouse, you get to roll it into an inherited IRA and there's RMD rules, there's different rules. If you're a child, you get life expectancy RMDs and then once you turn 18, you become the 10-year person. This is super high level. It's just to give an idea how they changed but if, you, if you're taking the Series 7 of the SAE, this might be on here, a little high level. I went a little deeper than you need to maybe go on the 7, but I have seen questions on it that talk about this whole thing, so it's good to know. Anyway, if you like what I'm doing, please check me out Tuesdays and Thursdays, YouTube. I do a live q and I'm the original one doing it. I've been doing it for three years now. Come in and ask questions on any, any FINRA exam at all that you want. And if you can't find me, I'm Capital Vantage Tutoring, or my, or my handle now is at Series 7 exam.